Hello, my name is Stephen Herring. I'm the Director of Alumni Relations for the Los Angeles campus of the Academy, and thank you for joining us for our alumni panel today. Our first guest was born in Long Island and raised in Chicago. David Eigenberg is a graduate of the New York campus of the Academy and is known to audiences for his role as Steve Brady in the Emmy Award winning series Sex and the City, as well as his appearances on TV shows including ER, The King of Queens, Ghost Whisperer, NCIS, Castle, and Law and Order. He is now starring as Lieutenant Christopher Herman in the hit TV show Chicago Fire. Thanks for joining us today, David. All right, it's good to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Our next guest, John Steiger, is a 2014 New York Academy graduate and was a member of the New York Campus 2015 production company. He's had roles in several theater productions since graduation, such as I Can Kiss Like Ted Bundy, Much Ado About Nothing, <laughs> Romeo and Juliet, A Christmas Carol, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, but he may be best known for his, portray his portrayal of Scorpius Malfoy in the play Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Welcome, John. Happy to be here. Next, I'd like to introduce Jasmine Haver, a native of Colorado and a 2018 graduate of the Los Angeles campus, as well as a member of the 2019 Los Angeles campus production company. She was selected as the student representative of her graduating class and is known for her roles in D.A. Henry's Cover Up and It's a Girl Thing. Great having you here, Jasmine. Thank you, Stephen. Happy to be here. Best known for her role as Brandy Max in the NBC comedy series Parks and Recreation, Mara Marini is a graduate of the Los Angeles campus full-time conservatory program. Her other television appearances include Blackish, Schitt's Creek, as well as The Whole Truth, and she worked with Dax Shepard and Michael Pena in the show Chips. Thank you so much for being with us here today, Mara. For having me. <laughs> so let's go ahead and throw our first question over to you, David. Um, can you first, uh, can you tell me, where did you first learn about the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and uh, why did you decide to attend? Um, I was looking for a program for me because I knew I couldn't find I couldn't get, I, I was looking for a program for me that was concise and to the point. So the academy was a two-year program. It was an accredited program, although I, I never went on to go to any further college. But, um, and, it, and, it, and it worked, it was all specifically theater, acting, movement, a little singing, even though I'm not good at that. But it was all, it was all within the field. And I didn't want to take calculus or... Um, you know, any of those other classes that you were supposed to take at university. So I wasn't cut out for that, but the academy was really, to me, was a work study uh, program. And that's what uh, really, really um, appealed to me. So, and also, then also all the old graduates that, that, uh, that I was very familiar with from, uh, 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 from Grace Kelly to, um, oh man, I'm fl I'm flaking out from uh, Kirk Douglas, <laughs> Kirk Grace Douglas. Kelly, uh, Robert Call, the whole, and I was yes. like, oh wow, these people are the people that I, Spencer Tracy, people yeah. that I I I, I, re I adored, and Edward G. Robinson. So, uh, Mar, I'd like to throw that question to you as well. Uh, so, how did you first learn about the Academy? Yeah, to piggyback on that, it was you know a school that had kind of everything that I wanted because I didn't want to take any of those electives that I wasn't interested in, and I. Um, since I was four, I'm from Canada originally, all I wanted to do was to get to LA and they were, they were holding auditions in Toronto and I was so excited. I was like, this could be my ticket to Los Angeles. So for me, it was also, I wanted to go to the school and I also really wanted to be in Los Angeles. So when I got in, I was just really ecstatic and, um, yeah, so that's kind of what happened. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Now, uh, Jasmine, can you tell us the same, uh, sure. why you came to the Academy? Yeah, absolutely. So I was acting in high school and part of me wanted to pursue it as a career, but another part of me when I graduated was like, oh, okay, you know, I'm done with high school. I need to find like a grown up job with dental insurance and a 401k, you know, like I need to go to school and like pick something that can be a career, right? So I went to a university and um, it was a great school, you know, no complaints about the school itself. It just wasn't for me. You know, I didn't feel my complete self because I wasn't performing and I wasn't being able to be creative. And, you know, I just started looking into my options and I've always been a movie lover. I've always been a lover of old Hollywood and, you know, everything about it. So when I was looking into stuff, exactly like what David was saying, you know, I found this incredible a list of alumni and was like, okay, well, if it's good enough for Grace Kelly and Spencer Tracy and Lauren Bacall, then it is good enough for me. You know what I mean? And just the idea that I could go to 
Hollywood, like, you know, be right in it, right in all that history where all the people that I love and have looked up to for years were and were studying, you know, I just thought it would be like the greatest honor to just be able to walk in their footsteps, you know. Thank you for that, Jasmine. Um, John, how you found out about the Academy and also can you tell me uh, a little bit why you decided on uh, the New York campus? Um, yeah, I did. They sent out when I was looking at colleges, they had started sending out like the brochures and all that stuff. And I hadn't really heard of the Academy. I actually hadn't realized how uneducated in the field I was up until about a year before I got accepted. I didn't even know you could go to school for just acting. That was a really imagine my surprise yeah. that you could do that. Um, so when I was um, going through schools and auditioning for schools and stuff, I was doing my first professional performance of a show called um, Coast of Utopia by Tom Stoppard. And um, uh, two of the guys that were in it who were kind of like my mentors in that show said, if you're really serious about this, you have to spend time studying in either New York or LA. Mm -hmm. And um, one of them, uh, Joel, he had actually gone to the academy in LA campus. And so I decided, you know what, if I'm getting this opportunity to do it right out of high school, I should probably just do it, right? Just get that over with. Um, and I chose New York because I'm from upstate New York. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a East Coast baby. You know? So it's very strange being here in San Francisco sometimes. Can you actually maybe tell us a little bit while I got you here on about the New York campus and sort of the experience? What's it like um, uh, being on that stage there at that campus? It's amazing. Um, you know, if you've ever if you've ever been set foot or flown over New York, you know that it's cr insane. It's it's one of the greatest cities in the world. It is, I think it's in a way tailor made for the theater, just because of the 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 amount that's there and the people that are there and the hustle and bustle and the energy. You step outside and it it just hits you. Um, so to be in the New York campus kind of felt it, it had an interesting natural feel to it it was very you didn't feel intimidated you didn't feel like you were out of your league you felt like you were a student you were learning with everyone else you felt safe um, and I personally felt like I got the experience to really flex my muscles and and do things that I wouldn't normally do. I mean, in my academy year, we made a brand new musical. I was fully nude on stage. By the end of school, there wasn't anything I couldn't do. So wow. <laughs> it, was, um, it was a nice place to be able to try things and fail and yeah. learn to the best of my abilities. And I mean, you know, there, there were good times, there were bad times, but I, I left feeling ready, which was nice. Right. Can you tell us what the value of conservatory training, like, and how has that served you in your career? Um, I think it was really so amazing because you're, you're thrown in, you have all these different teachers. And so rather than, you know, just go by, okay, well, Stella Adler, Uta Hagen, Stanislavski kind of thing, you got this cross section of all these different teachings and you could kind of cherry pick what works for you. And I found that really helpful um, for me personally. Um, and yeah, I think, you, you never stop learning, you know, I'll always like I've popped into so many classes as things are maybe slower or whatever, because you always just want to be, you know, creating and, and practicing and, and just getting better. So um, it's really helped me. <laughs> For me, I, I needed, um, I started acting, I got into um, uh, the stage union in Chicago. I, I was, I was going to a trade school for carpentry and long story short, I ended up doing a, uh, a musical here in Chicago with some, really wonderful actors. We were all really young. Megan Mullally and Kevin Anderson and Alan Ruck were in it. And they were really inspiring. And so I didn't really feel like an actor because I was really a carpenter at the time. Um, and I shouldn't have been in the show. But the wonderful director was a little bit taken by me, I think, in a way. And he said, who are you and where'd you come from? And he put me in the chorus of this show in the replacement uh, position. And I didn't, I didn't have a sense of what I was doing. So when I saw the Academy, I was I was excited by it because it was going to expose me to so many different parts of it. It was going to work on my speech, which I, I was never very good at, obviously, and um, uh, and just learn all these different parts of 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 that world. And I got to say that, like, 
theater history class was so important to me um, when I when I started to understand the background. Academy put me into different positions that I hadn't been and I wasn't really comfortable with, but I really got excited once I was in those positions and I started understanding uh, uh, storytelling. And I, I really, 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 it expanded my horizons. So I started to understand how important it was that story was going to teach me about living. So the academy offered that, and I and I just and I jump right into it. And uh, and then there was a teacher there that that um that had to sing. I don't know if they still teach it. Was she called it "Seeking the Joy of Your Own Experience"? And um, at Carol Prescott, and that was kind of really interesting and really kind of lit me up. And uh, and it was about seeking the joy of your own experience, and that was allowed you to be happy, sad, uh, frustrated, angry, all the different things. So um, I wanted to pop back over to John real quick and just ask you. Um, so, you know, as a uh, recent uh, graduate, what's the most surprising thing that you um, learned about when you left the academy? Oh, uh, um, I think one of the big things about the industry in general is that the academy does great at is, is teaching you technique and, and being comfortable and finding what you want to do. But then there's a lot of practical stuff like going to auditions every day, every week um, and managing that and, and, and uh, building yourself up for that and, and getting properly prepared. And then a lot of the work that I did was actually new work, was work that had never, like I Can Kiss Like Ted Bundy, shockingly, is an original play that had never been done before. You know, it, there, there's a lot of like new stuff that, that kind of came through, which was really exciting. And um, so you gotta have to kind of learn how that goes, you know, because one day you do the play one this way or a musical this way, and then the next day they give you a whole new song or they give you a whole new scene that you gotta learn. So the academy was great for building those foundations and, and everything like that. But I, I think there was a lot of um, just stuff that you had to go out and do mm -hmm. To, to fully understand it. So like the, the audition process yeah. and what that's like, what's, it, what's an open call like? You know, we don't, we don't go out, we don't take field trips to open calls, thank God, but it's, it's a different beast, you know, it's a different beast. So managing the auditions and, and rolling up to work, being ready to do whatever. What is a, a valuable lesson that you took away from your academy experience that help, has helped you so far in your career? I would say, oh, that's a, I mean, there's, there's so many things to be honest with you, but I would say um, the professionalism is huge. I mean, it's really, really important. Um, I had such a wonderful opportunity last fall with um, another alumni to work on two other alumni of the Academy of the New York campus, um, an amazing original play by Tara L. Wilson Noth, who I think I think David knows from Chris. And um, when we had the opportunity to work on that, I mean, we were, you know, two alumni who were fairly new out of the gate, you know, um, Charlotte had just graduated and I had just finished company and we were really in it. You know, we were completely thrown into this production with equity and non-equity actors. You know, we were finding a, a space to do this play. We were trying to figure out ways to get it to the Berkshires, which is a huge theater festival back East. You know, I mean, we had, large names on it you know we had chris noth on it as the producer because his lovely wife was the one who wrote it you know reina who directed it is this amazing woman with all of these credits you know these were real real industry people you know and charlotte and i having this opportunity as brand new alumni to stage manage for this and and do whatever they needed you know it was just one of those things where it was like you know the things that we want to be doing here's an opportunity to jump in with both feet and could we you know rise to the occasion and one of the things that that i was really proud of both of us for for doing was being able to keep our heads above water and that was because of our training at the academy you know being able to say yes to everything and knowing that you know it's it's a village it really takes a village that's something that the academy teaches you that you have a family so we could rely on some of the props people from the academy some of the costuming people you know we were able to rehearse actually at the academy in the los angeles campus because we were alumni you know so we made all these fabulous connections and using that professionalism that we had learned with the industry 
we were able to make this thing happen, you know, and it was like one big Academy reunion, which was amazing and so great. But we really, you know, saw this show from the ground up and, and being, you know, two people who weren't, you know, experienced industry people. It was really amazing to know that we had that training from the Academy behind us and that we were going to be able to face anything that came our way because we had those roots, you know what I mean? And we had that strength that we had been taught at the Academy. And I don't know if we would have been able to do it without that. You know, I really am grateful. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad we were able to help. Um, Mara, I wanted to ask you, um, do you have any advice for aspiring actors? A lot of the people watching this panel will be people who are considering, uh, you know, starting a career. So if there's any advice that you've learned over, the, over your experience that you could share, um, for anyone who's looking to get into acting? Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> it's so hard because, you know, as everyone knows, there's no formula. You know, you can yeah. be the most talented, it doesn't mean X, Y, and Z, and, but I do think it's so important to have training. Um, I think that's definitely helped me throughout my career, is just I, having a, a strong foundation of training and, and knowing how to like attack copy, how to, you know, break down story, all that kind of stuff is so, so essential so number one i think is training and i think once you have that behind you I, I i know i've known people that have come to la and they're just like i'm just gonna audition and that's great but then when that casting director sees you they're gonna know that maybe you, you don't know what you're doing so when you step foot through that door you want to at least have some foundation so they bring you back and bring you back so for me i think training is number one but yeah and uh david um can you uh any advice for aspiring actors as well you have to listen to the voices inside of you and you learn that at the academy and follow whatever your own truth is because this industry to me is not the end all and be all. Um, I think after being in this industry for so long, uh, it's who you are and not what you are. I don't define myself as an actor. I learned from one of my teachers that if you define yourself as an actor and you're not acting, then what are you? And uh, I, I think it's really important to understand kind of who you are and what kind of human being, what kind of human being do you want to be? And, and I learned a lot of that at the Academy. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to piggyback on that because yeah. Jennifer Coolidge and Adam Scott spoke at my graduation. And right. one of the things Jennifer Coolidge said was, you know, I wasn't the most talented, but I was persistent and I stayed mm -hmm. and I saw all these people leave year after year. And I thought that was really really relevant. And then funny, um, when I worked with Adam Scott on Parks and Rec, it was the debate episode. And I was like, you spoke at my graduation at the Academy. And he's like, no way, Paul Rudd spoke at my graduation. Oh. Paul Rudd was also in the episode. So it was like a triumvirate. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a small world. It's amazing that um, <laughs> how, much, how many connections there are with uh, Chris Noth and, and everybody. So it's, uh, what, uh, what, maybe also you can weigh in on this, Mara, too, then. Um, what, so maybe how has the industry changed since you left the Academy and then how is it today, especially right now, we're considering some, there's some real changes going on in the world. Oh, it is so, what I thought I signed up for is so different than what it is. I mean, with the, you know, with obviously YouTube, TikTok, like all these different things that are there now. I mean, on one hand, it's, it's so cool. You can create your own content. You can show the world. And, and that's, that's really awesome. You can make connections that maybe you couldn't have made before. But on the flip side, you know, it is so saturated now. And so you really have to kind of rise to the top in that, in that sort of world. And it's just, I feel personally, I do so much better in the room. Like when I'm in front of the casting director, I take notes really well, so if I if they want to change something, I feel like that's where I can shine personality-wise and stuff too. So for me, the self tapes I find really hard because you're self-directing on top of I don't know if I'm choosing the best take. I don't know if I'm being vain and choosing the take I think I look the best in. Like that's where I feel really uh, a little bit of a disconnect and yeah. a challenge because I I really like to go into the room. Um, yeah. So that kind of stuff I think is is just that's not what I was thought I was signing up for when I, you know, when I first started, we didn't really have that stuff. So it's, uh, it's definitely changed a lot and it's constantly changed. I hope that answered the question. No, that's great. It actually brings another uh, question that I can uh, give to John and uh, Jasmine here. Just um, maybe you can share some insights for uh, any parents uh, as well, um, just about uh, what they should think about their, um, their son or daughter going into acting and any advice you have for them. It's hard but it is possible. And that's a big thing that, that I don't think a lot of people will, will tell you is that 
you know, this industry is, is hard and it, it can be vain and it can be treacherous and it can be all these awful, horrible things that you see on reality TV and things like that, but it is possible. I mean, the, the, the four of us now are proof that you can do this, you know, and uh, there are little things along the way that, that pick you up. Every job that you get is a huge boost to, to your, your son or daughter or, or, or whoever your child is. And it's not, about, um, it's not about being on a big screen or on TV or winning all these awards and stuff like that. It's literally making a paycheck so that you can pay your next rent, mm -hmm. being an actor, having a job that will let you put money in your 401k or get you groceries for the next week. That's success as an actor. So it's not as, it's, it's not, I think parents have a, 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 a sort of Hollywood perspective of what being an actor is when really it's just, it's just a job and it's possible. It's tough, but we can do it. Excellent. Thank you. Jasmine? Yeah, absolutely. Um, going off of what John said, so I know my mom wouldn't mind me telling this story, but um, so the year that I was supposed to move out to Los Angeles, so my dad is in event coordinating, so he's kind of in the creative business. My mom is in healthcare. And the year I was supposed to move out to go to the academy, you know, right in the beginning when I was still at that university, my mom actually lost her job of 35 years in a merger. And so when we were sitting down to talk about my options, my parents brought to me this whole concept that, you know, healthcare is, you know, the most secure industry, you know, sciences and maths, you know, those where you go to school and you have a job, you know, you have job security. And, you know, my mom at... 55, you know, was job hunting and she has all of these degrees, you know, she's done everything right, but it's because the world was changing, you know, and what they were telling me is, you know, there's no job security in anything. And I think everyone will tell you that, you know, no matter what you do, there's always a chance that the job won't be there, you know? And so my parents, I'm so lucky to have parents who are so supportive because I think that's been so much of it, you know, because when when you're calling home, just, you know, you don't even know why, but you're just stressed and you don't know what they can do. And you don't think there is anything that they can do, but just, you know, to have someone that believes in you when maybe you don't believe in yourself. And I really credit my parents for, for being behind me like that, you know, to say that, you know, exactly like what John was saying, you know, you know, we're all worried about, you know, you moving away and us not being there and you having something that can pay your bills you know, and that you won't be stressed about all the time and that you will have some sense of financial security. But, you know, it's most important to follow your dreams. And if it's something that you want to do, and if it's something that you're good at, and you feel like you're supposed to be doing, that is very important. You know, that is more important than doing a desk job somewhere where you don't enjoy it, and you're not happy and, and the energy you're putting out into the world is not a positive one because you're unhappy with what you're doing you know and i remember when i got my first check after my very first commercial mm -hmm. and it was you know for social media it wasn't a national commercial so it was only like 250 dollars. but i remember just like calling my parents and like how excited we all were that i had a check with my name on it for acting you know and it was like in that moment a week after showcase i was a paid actor you know i had gotten paid for what i had come out here to do so whatever happened after that I had achieved one of my goals, which was getting paid to do what I love, you know? And I think my parents were really able to join me in that excitement because it's, you know, we're all rallying for each other, you know? And at the end of the day, parents just want their children to be successful and to be happy, you know? And so we just hope that, that they're able to support us in this, this crazy <laughs> endeavor in New York City or in Los Angeles. Well, let me go ahead and actually pop back over uh, while I uh, got Jonathan here too. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the differences between working on camera versus working on stage? Uh, there are a lot of differences. Um, you know, I, I'm, I've done much more theater than I have film. Um, so any of you, you, you film, film uh, uh, people, please jump in, let me know if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, but with theater, the big thing is with both of them, it's the, the audience that you're playing for. Mm -hmm. In theater, you know, here at the Kern, I got 1,600 people right in front of me. Mm -hmm. 
I immediately know if I'm doing something right, if I'm doing something wrong. Uh, I can, you know, if the audience is tired, if the audience is drunk, you know, there's, there's so many different, if, if there's something going on, I know instantly what the audience is thinking with film. It is much more intimate because you are, you know, you're performing for this. You're performing for a lens, essentially. And what's neat about it is that you can really immerse yourself in the film world. You don't, you, you obviously have to include the camera in it, but the camera moves. The camera can zoom in and out. It can find its way to you. So you can really connect and lose yourself in the setting, in the costumes, in your other actors, most importantly. Um, and you can do that in theater, but you have to be aware of that fourth wall at all times because they can't move. You have to be able to show them what's going on at all times from every perspective. And you have to be on the entire show. If you're on stage and you're not in camera, somebody will, or you're, you're, if you're on stage and you're not in character, somebody will tell you at yeah. the end of the show. I've had lots of people be like, wow, you were like, like your mannerisms and all this stuff, they were so great. I was like, that means somebody's watching me at all times. Whereas with film, if you're not on camera, you could be juggling, you know, doing all kinds of stuff. Obviously you should be giving your partner what they need. Um, but I think those are the biggest differences between theater and film is the audience that you're playing for. Yeah. Jasmine, do you have any, uh, oh, yeah, Mara, sorry. Oh, I just want to piggyback. I agree with all of that. I think for me, um, I've done so much theater as well. And then there was a couple of years where I, I kind of went from show to show to show to show. And then there was a couple of years where I, I wasn't doing any theater. And then I had done some TV and then I got to do it, uh, a theater, a, a new play. And it was, like, oh my gosh, the luxury of getting six weeks of rehearsal. Whereas TV, it's so fast. It's so fast. You're like, oh, just one take, we're done. Oh, okay. Whereas like with, um, you know, it's just such a luxury to get to play and like really get into that character with your, you know, with your other castmates and stuff. It's just it, it's such a luxury that I kind of forgot about. And then going back to it, I'm like, oh yeah, this is such a treat. So anyway. Yeah. Actually, while uh, we're talking, Mara, uh, um, can you tell us also a little bit what it's about, uh, what it's like being um, an international student? Because uh, you're coming from Canada. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Um, so it was, it, it kind of worked out you know, nicely because I got to come to LA. I got the the visa to be here and everything. Um, I don't know what the climate is like now with, with Trump and everything, but I assume student wise, it's pretty safe. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, it was great for the, you know, and then you kind of have to, either you have to kind of figure out how to stay, but that portion while you're here um, for the school was, was, was good. You know, my dad took me out, we found a place, everything was, they were so terrified about me moving to LA, but they, it was all, it all worked out well. And um, yeah, I, I don't think we had on-campus housing back then. No, do you now? <laughs> yeah. Did you know that? Oh, it's so much safer now. <laughs> Parents yes. don't worry. Yes. I stayed at it in New York. I stayed at the on-campus housing. We were the first year. Great. We were the first year in LA. Yeah. So you oh, right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the thing that gets out. That's right. messed up. <laughs> <laughs> I moved to New York in 82, and it was down and dirty. And it was the old Times Square. We lived in the YMCA. Yeah. And there was nothing but creatures living yeah. in there. And, there was a strip club across the street. You guys got yeah. housing. Uh, housing. You were on your own. Uh, so <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> I want to say something. It's really nice listening to everybody talk. Um, I feel uh, old, but I also feel like it, it, it's such a familiar thing. And I and I want I want um, everybody there to know that just listening to you, it's been a, it's, it's a treat for me to listen to your experiences also. And I think you all are very accurate in your in your take on it from in, in old gun. Um, I think everything you said has been pretty spot on, and it's it's a uh, it's it, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a wonderful thing that you're share, we're sharing this or you're sharing this. With, with other people that are looking towards the business. So I'm, I'm the truth meter. I've, I've been around and, and you're all bing, bing, bing. And yeah. I'm, I, it's great. Well, thank you, David. Uh, this actually, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple questions here for everyone. Um, and I just wanna go around the, the horn with everybody to see, get your thoughts on. So let's start with uh, John. Uh, so if you knew then what you know now, what would be the thing you tell your, yourself when you first started the Academy? Oh, <laughs> um, 
probably I would I would tell myself not to take it as seriously as I did. Um, well, because when I went to school, it was very blinders on. This is the goal. This is what you got to do. Um, I, I probably would have loosened up a little bit. It probably would have helped me in the long run. But I was, you know, I was, I was excited and I was um, really hungry. And I'm still very hungry, even though like I'm, I'm working now. I don't think that, um, and, and I think, you know, David is great proof of this. I don't think the hunger ever goes away, right? Like you never stop being hungry for this. No, no, you always want to, you want to go forward and find something new, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But but then, you know, you, you, you get to this point where you can just, you really just let yourself go and you have a lot of fun. You can have like fun. That's another secret they don't tell you. You can have fun at auditions. <laughs> it's, it's hard, but you can do it. <laughs> you can do it. Um, so I think if I, I would go back and just tell myself to relax a little bit, mm -hmm. to enjoy the time, to know that the mistakes that I, or the, the mistakes I thought I made are okay, that they're, it's okay to do that, especially in a education setting. Mm -hmm. If you can't, our, um, when I was at the Academy, our head of movement was Heather Benton and it, our first year, our orientation, she literally just said, fail. Mm. fail while you're here yeah you don't do it out there <laughs> and I've always I always always loved that and um and and again just going back on what David said about um you know throwing yourself into this industry and throwing all of yourself into it that's great but also find a hobby that's not this you know you know say you, know, you can say, you can, you know, say stuff. Yeah. you can say things like like oh no i can't i can't do anything else i can do other things i am capable of doing other things i'm i'm i i can do that i choose to do this because nothing else on this planet makes me feel the same way that's a big thing and then, again if that ever goes away then it's time to start thinking about some other stuff but really it's just relax. You, you think you're going into this, this big fancy schmancy thing. No, we, I've like held people crying while I'm crying, snot covered, sweating after movement. Okay. It's not that, you know, it's not this big thing you should put on a pedestal. It's yeah. a place to go and just throw stuff at the wall. Excellent. Yes. Uh, Jasmine, would you like to weigh in too? I would say to be as open as possible, mm -hmm. you know, and that can mean a whole lot of things that can be to be fearless in your journey that you're going through, like John was saying with the classes, you know, if you're insecure about something or if you're feeling nervous about doing something, you don't feel like you're good at something, you know, you, you don't feel great at movement in dance class or in the singing or when you're doing a dialect, you know, just to be open and fearless, but also to be open to all the roles you get, you know, because if you're getting a role when you're in school, if you're getting a piece to work on, it's because you can learn from it, you know, and even if you maybe don't, see what you can learn from it then, what you maybe can learn from the character or from the story or from the script, you know, whatever that may be, to be open to what it can teach you, you know, about the human condition or about this person's life that you're trying to step into, you know, just be open to everything. Because even if it's different from, from what you know, that doesn't mean that it's bad, you know? And I think in this industry, we're constantly seeing things that are different. You know, we're constantly being thrown into, you know, cold water or hot water, just very different things all the time. And just being able to be open to that and open to that change and just going with the flow and saying yes is really a great skill to have, especially when you're in school, you know, because like John was saying, there is no safer place to fail and make mistakes than the academy. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Mara, um, anything that you tell your first year yourself? Yeah, piggybacking on the, uh, both what John and Jasmine said, because that's so, so relevant, like just not, I was so scared of doing something wrong. I'm such a perfectionist that like allowing myself to fail because you just learn so much from that. Um, not having so much pressure, I think, on the timeline. I think, you know, especially coming out of like showcase and stuff, so, so many of my classmates got agents and representation. I had to hustle and hustle and hustle to even get a, anything for, for, for years and years. And it wasn't years, you know, a decade before I got like a really like what I thought was a substantial credit so it's it's one of those things where it's 
don't put so much pressure on the timeline. If, if this is what you feel your soul is, bless you, your soul is on earth to do, just keep doing it. It might not amount to what you consider you made it or whatever that is, but you're, you're creating, you're, you're doing what you're, what you're meant to do. And, and that's so special too. So. David, anything, um, well, I a two part question, anything that you would tell your, yourself when you first started out and if you can share any like particularly member, memorable class or production that you're involved in while you're at the Academy. Um, you know, I, I think Jonathan kind of hit it too. Um, uh, you know, about going easy on yourself and having fun. Uh, I also think it's really important in, in that, in that, in commenting on that, that it, at the Academy, I was, I was really focused and your teachers made you focus. So it was hard and I was really hard on myself. And I think you need to go through that in order to get to the understanding that you should go easy on yourself. So to see my younger self and say, Hey, go easy. I would, but I wouldn't. I, there, I had a bunch of really um, great uh, eye openers at the Academy and um, one of them was, I was, uh, uh, two of them, two of the shows I was there, I was, um, I was, um, I was a hustler, I was a male hustler, and, um, and then ended up doing a male hustler on Broadway in Six Degrees of Separation, in the original cast, and I went in for, I think, John Cameron Mitchell ended up playing uh, Trent in that show, who is an amazing, brilliant actor, and I went, they asked me to read for that, and I was like, I wasn't very good at it, and, they, and it was a really small part, the hustler, but I said, I, I really want to read for the hustler. And they were like, well, that, that's, that's next week. But they were kind of like talking down to the role. And um, in a certain way, that's what I felt. But then like the next week I got to go back. And I think because I had learned it so well and I, and I loved it because um, it tapped into the hustler side of me. Um, and I'm a hustler. Uh, and you know, the other thing, Ron Marquette said, he was our theater history teacher and I loved our movement teachers. And um, in the acting teachers, but Ron Marquette, our history teacher said, if you're in this business because you want to make money, you're in the wrong business. And it was, you were like, and, and he was right. Um, and, I, and I never was in this business to make money. And I got really lucky, really, really lucky. And I'm really grateful every day to have the work that I have, but I don't take it for granted. And I don't think that I'm entitled to it at all. And I always love talking to younger actors as they come into shows and they're doing a guest spot. It's one of the hardest jobs. It's a hard job to have one line in a TV show or a movie. Um, it's, it's brutal. I remember I saw it, uh, Michael Caine talked about it in one of his acting tapes. And he said it was the hardest job because I would get brutalized the first couple of times around having a line or two. And I'd just be, and I couldn't. And, and, but that's a, that's a real thing, that it's not easy to, have, to start out acting. It's, 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 it's really hard. Yeah. No, thank, uh, uh, so I want to go ahead and give you um, uh, anyone else uh, a chance to weigh in on that too. Is there any particular teacher or class or aha moment, uh, kind of like what David just said, um, that you had while you're at the academy? Yeah, no, I, um, <laughs> I um, really quick, picking up, uh, piggyback over what David said about being afraid, and then I'll, I'll jump on the question. But um, Danny Burstein came to talk to us my company year. And he was doing some sort of benefit or something. It was a big profile thing. And he was um, doing it with another, I can't remember her name, but another really big actress that he looked up to and everything like that. And they were backstage, they were ready to go on. And he was, you know, he was nervous, he was anxious. And the, the actress said to him, she's like, you nervous? He goes, uh, yeah, a little. She goes, good, good. That means you care. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think, you know, when, when we talk about being nervous and being anxious, it's because we do want to do a good job and we don't want to, we don't want people to be like, oh, that was a choice. You know, I hate that. I always hated that. <laughs> that was a choice. <laughs> um, but being afraid doesn't mean that you're, you're doubting. It means that you care, yeah. you know. But for me, one of my favorite moments at the Academy, um, my acting teacher, my second year, Jackie Bartone, who was the quintessential acting teacher. I mean, she was either... 70 or 80, nowhere in between, or no, like 70 or 90, nowhere in between, and had her legs were longer than her torso, and she was like New York City in a human being, and she would never let you get away with anything. She would call you out on everything. And we were doing um, this animal exercise where we had, we had to study um, the movements and the uh, behaviors of different animals. 
And so I chose a tiger. And so what you would do is you'd sit in a circle as your animal and then you, you would go in the center and you'd interact with all the other animals in the circle. And for whatever reason, there was this uh, one uh, tailor who was in my class. She was a dog. And for whatever reason, we started getting, like, getting into it. Like I was like, I'm, I'm going to eat you. And she's like, please don't eat me as like these animals. And Jackie Martone comes over to me, this tiny twig of a woman, grabs the nape of my neck pulls me into the center of the circle and goes, stay <laughs> and back. And I go, it's time to go sit down. <laughs> Never forget it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's a good lesson. Yeah. It's a good lesson. <laughs> stay. <laughs> Mara, anything coming to mind? It's so hard. I had so many amazing teachers, Madonna Young, Betty Carlin, say what you mean, mean what you say. She would always, always just repeat that. And, whether it's like the objective behind the line, like knowing each objective that you're, you're, you're going for each time and she would not let up you. She always caught you. Um, John Peck, amazing voice teacher. And there's just so many, we had so many great moments. It's hard to like pinpoint just one because it was just such a, so much happened in that sp sp time span. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was an amazing experience and you, you really got what you put in, you know? Um, I think that was really important too. You put your whole self in, you're going to get so much, so much out of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Jasmine, anything? Yeah, I think what, I think what Mara just said is so funny because I agree. I mean, in, in my three years at the Academy, I think I really got a dose of, of everything, of every kind of temperament because, you know, you have the Betty Carlins and the Jamie Nichols and the ones that don't take any shit from anybody ever. You know what I mean? Like the ones that will let you know. And then, you know, on the other side, you have, you have a really big dose of, of that, you know, and get it together. And are you going to show up and do it or not, you know? And then you also have this really wonderful dose of, of the kindness and the, the gentleness, you know, the Mark Knowles, the Tim Landfields, you know, you have a great balance at the Academy. You know, you have ones that that are, you know, kind of kicking your ass when you need it because they know you can be better and they know either you've gotten comfortable or maybe you're just not there today, you know, whatever, they keep you on your toes. And then they have other really amazing faculty that are just really able to connect with you and kind of see into what's going on with you, you know, without you needing to say anything. I was really blessed with an amazing teacher my first semester, Mary Blyer, who, I mean, she was just fabulous about her intuition with her students, you know, and it wasn't, ever like you know this this big thing if someone came in and they weren't feeling it today she was just someone who was like you know feel your emotions because no matter what you do in this industry you're always going to have times where something else happens where life happens you know but how can how can you use that if you need to do a job if you need to get up if you have to if the show has to go on if you have to keep going how can you do that you know and like those the the balance of those those kind of techniques and all of those temperaments really gives you the ability to shape a toolbox, not only for, you know, your skills professionally, but like you emotionally as a person, you know? And I think that the things that I learned from my teachers at school also really went into me becoming who I am on a, on a personal level, not even professionally, you know, completely excluding my professional skills. You know, I looked up to so many of my teachers and I just admired them and I wanted to, you know, be like them, that they made me a better person, you know? Amazing. <laughs> Thank you again for sharing. Uh, I just have uh, one last question uh, for everyone, sort of a timely question, um, and then we're going to uh, conclude the panel. Uh, basically, with all that's going on in the world, I just want to know, how are you guys finding solace or creativity in this time uh, with all the changes and uh, it, to, you know, with the stay at home orders and, and uh, the COVID-19 situation. So is, is there anything you're doing with your time now creatively or, or reaching out or, or what um, at this time to try and uh, cope with the situation? Uh, yeah, um, I had actually had a couple of projects that I was working on before all of this happened. So I've kind of just been playing catch up with all yeah. of that. Um, one of them is I, um, I'm working with um, American Conservatory Theater um, and, and possibly equity to create a um, theater etiquette um, yeah. video in the style, in the parody style of a flight safety video. <laughs> 
Nice. So it's something to, because to, what we, because at, at Harry Potter, what we learned or what I've noticed is that um, a lot of people, this is their first time coming to the theater mm -hmm. and they just don't know what the traditions and what the rules are. So you can't really blame them for that because there is nothing really out there that's a, a, a nice little digestible thing that informs. So we're, we're kind of working on something like that to help just a fun way to teach people what the demystify the theater is what we like to call it. It's just kind of a nice fun way to do that. Um, uh, there's a reading that I've been working on that I'm setting up with a bunch of people. And then one of uh, my alumni, Michael Ford, actually, mm. he has started a the actors quarantine uh, collective. Yeah, the, the Actors Quarantine <laughs> Collective. So he's created this whole page for um, people to go and share. They just did a couple of readings recently. And then Mike, Matt Stana does um, Last Shot Film Festival. Yeah. Um, they just recently did um, a quarantine, the quarantine project. So you filmed a minute long video, short film, and the winner got like $300 and there was a second place, wow. third place. And they are just about to do um, act two. So they're about wow. to do it all over again because they had such an amazing response. So I'm probably going to submit for that one this time. Um, so there's, there's, it, it, it's actually been amazing to see the resilience of the industry in this time that people are still like, well, I can't do this, then I'm gonna do this. Like, you can't keep, you can't keep creative people down. It's physically impossible. Oh, great, well, like, um, Mara, anything that you're up to now? Yeah, so um, it's funny, we, I shot a short film, um, Sean Wing, who is alumni mm -hmm. is in it, Jane Lynch and some really funny people, uh, about seeing bad theater, and it's a kind of a dark comedy thing. But that same team, we got together, we were about to shoot a second short film, and uh, this all happened. So we've been doing Zoom meetings and writing other stuff, which has been really lovely. Um, and then just, I've gotten some, you know, voiceover auditions, really, that I can do remotely, but it's been a little slower. But uh, I've been taking these Skillshare classes and doing some fun drawings and stuff, just trying to, like, create and, and, and writing as well. I've been writing my own things, yeah. too. So just trying to, you know, keep, keep going. <laughs> Excellent. Jasmine? Um, so like Mara mentioned earlier, um, I'm also a, a perfectionist, you know, a chronic overachiever, someone who is always trying to do so many things. So I actually have taken the opposite approach to this and I am allowing myself to slow down for the first time in a very, very long time, which has been really difficult. You know, because I have always had this mentality that if I'm not running from one thing to another or one audition to another or a job or this or that, that like I'm not working hard enough, which okay, but also like it's okay to rest, you know, like it's okay to relax. I've been giving myself the opportunity to explore, you know, explore the movies I always wanted to watch and may maybe, you know, actively notice things I like, but just enjoy, you know, because so much of this industry that I wanted to be part of was truly being a lover of, of plays and of movies and that being kind of like my happy place and, and my escape place. And so I've just been allowing myself to watch great movies, you know, and be inspired and, and keeping the inspiration like that, but in a non-pressurized way. You know, I've gotten emails about, you know, self-tapes or, oh, can you send me this or can you send me that? And I've been doing that, but my, my main focus, my primary focus has just been enjoying the time that I have to watch the things I have not had a chance to watch, you know, catching up on all the TV that people have recommended to me, but I haven't had time to just like sit and watch an episode of this or an episode of that, you know, watch movies that I love that I've seen a million times, but I still love and movies that I haven't ever watched before. So that's been my creative quarantine. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, David, anything that you're up to now? Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, I, I didn't have anything planned. And I think everything that everyone said has been very, very valid. And I thank you, thank thank all of you for sharing it. Um, I, you know, I, I, I've been doing work around the house and, and, I, and I find when I'm doing stuff, I, I've been, I've been I, I'm not a writer, but I, I write plays in my head and I forget them. But I always find it very interesting because what my work has kind of always been about is to try to wonder the, 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 the several sides of, of, of anything that somebody says or the perspectives that people say. Uh, some actors have been like, well, my character wouldn't do something like that, or I know my character would be. I've never been that kind of an actor. I've always been like, well, I could do it that way. 
or I could do it that way. And, and I try to find which one. I don't think one is right or wrong. So in my brain, I've been writing stuff. I've been sitting around with my kids and watching them create uh, drawings and stuff. And, and, and it's a slowdown for me. And then on the, on the, on the darker side, um, you know, in this quarantine has been also some mourning, um, has been mourning uh, the loss of, of friends uh, that died in New York uh, in these days. And um, looking at the special connection that, um, that we have as actors and, uh, and as creative people that it's different than any other job. Um, and how I sent a note to my castmates because an old, old friend of mine I hadn't talked to probably in 20 years, but we, we lived together in regional theater and, um, and he died. And I was like, I said to my, my other colleagues, there's some of them are younger. And I said, you know, don't take for granted and, and relish the fact that we all share this thing. And that's, it, um, it's, it's telling the story of the human condition. And that causes a bond with, all of us that you just don't, it, it, it's like, it's, it, it's different than any other profession. Um, and, and it's, and when you see somebody, you haven't seen them in 20 years, you, it doesn't matter. You go right to that place. Doesn't, you don't go like, Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't talked to you in 20 years. There's no, there's no discussion. That's the beauty of this business. Um, so um, I had to bring it I'm Debbie Downer sometimes. <laughs> But yeah. I think it needs to be noted that you know, people, yeah. are, people are gone. Yeah. And lovely people are gone. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Um, well, I, again, thank you so much to everyone uh, for uh, joining us today. Um, and I really appreciate you uh, sharing your insights into your experience at the Academy and your careers. And uh, we uh, look forward to seeing you again on uh, some future panels as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Stephen. Thank you guys. You're so good. You're all so great.